on, we're, we're right. We're right where we gotta be. Uh, all right, Tom's gonna take it over and we're on Camp Kennan. All right, whew, hey, listen. Let's pimp out, we, we are upgraded. We've got oh, yeah. a big addition. Yeah, guys, so check it out. If there are any problems with the microphone, it ain't my problem. We've got a wireless mic hooked right up to the camera. Thank you to B. Hutch. Brian Hutchinson sent Bob us, Hutchinson. Bob, Bob, sorry. Bob Hutchinson sent us this stuff. Let me put this away for a minute. There we go. So Bob sent us a microphone. We should be good from now on with these lives. So hopefully you guys can hear me. Let me know. Tom's reading the comments. Everyone says it's great. Taylor B just sent us $4.99. Thank you, Taylor B. Thank you so much, man. You guys are awesome. It's because of you guys we're getting stuff like this to make the overall experience better. Um, just want to say thanks to our Patreon supporters and uh, Bob Hutchinson for doing that. So today, I gotta be honest, I'm feeling a little under the weather. I'm catching a cold. My voice isn't so great and uh, a little bit of a runny nose, but I'm gonna power through and hang out with you guys. The pond is clearing up. I don't know if you guys can see how well it is, um, but it really, really starting to clear up. So I'm excited about that. Um, there's some cichlids in it. You can kind of make them out. They're, they're swimming around right now. You see the cichlids. I'm really excited. These are just some cichlids that I actually had in the front ponds, which have been breeding and getting overpopulated. So drop a, tet, uh, a little uh, trap in there and then they come on in here. So this is awesome. And then I think Paul Cafaro came over when I was in home yesterday and put some excess cichlids that he had in here. So these are African cichlids. Um, but really excited about how the pond's clearing up. Thanks, and, uh, Ryan's Ark and Craig Cooper. All right, Ryan and Craig Cooper, it sounds like you guys uh, hooked us up. Uh, shout out to you guys, thank you so much for doing that. So the pond is looking good and I'll tell you what, coming up Tuesday we, had a, we have a cool video, a fun video. It's kind of like the test flight for the pond, a test swim if you will. Uh, we went in the pond, we brought Buttercup in there, but we went in there with a friend of mine. I don't know if you ever heard of a guy named Travis Pastrana, but a good buddy of mine, he stopped over today. So that video is coming out on Tuesday. Really pumped about that. Uh, in the meantime, I wanted to talk and answer some questions and also show you what I've done with the leopard tortoise enclosure. So that was a fun video and a big video for us. A lot of people were into it. So we can walk down here and talk about it. Um, here's what's going on. We'll start at the waterfall. Uh, I put some logs in the waterfall there. Come on closer. And, and then what's great is you guys can probably hear me even over the din of this waterfall. Amazing. So I put some logs so it looks like they washed downstream and just fell there, but they're keeping leopard tortoises from venturing up onto the waterfall. So it's a natural looking barrier. I then also had to do a little work on some of the rocks because they can, they can climb. So uh, I did, I changed the layout, but I love this enclosure. Grass is starting to pop up underneath the uh, mulch. These um, muley grass, they call it, they're gonna get big and kind of a bulbous plant. So it'll provide cover for the tortoises to hide in. Uh, it's nice and high and dry. So I'm really excited about the way that this enclosure turned out. So Be pretty Hutch pumped. And Robert Medina jumped on and Be Hutch, and we're using it, bro. We're using your equipment. Thank you so much. Uh, Sophia is vlogging. Look, Sophia, Sophia is doing her own YouTube channel. I don't know. Thank it's you, Robert Medina. Yeah, Robert Medina. Thank you, man. So let's just wander. Let's just wander, Where man. The leopards, at? the leopards, it's kind of hot right now, so they are probably catching some rays over here. There's a couple, there's one hiding right there. I think some are still inside. Last night it was cold. When I see them like this, they're just kind of they're kind of stretched out. There's a male stretched all out, and he's just kind of doing his thing, catching up some sun. There's a female over there. I trimmed down the elephant grass. Um, so that these guys can keep it mowed a little bit better. And if you look, here were some new shoots and uh, they definitely mowed it down. So here's a new shoot right here. Um, and I, I'm thinking I want to keep this a little more manageable. Um, we're going to fix up the electric uh, next week. I'm excited. I'm going to have outlets and everything's going to look all profesh right over here. Daniel wants to know, and you have to repeat the question because okay. you can't hear me on the mic. But okay. Daniel wants to know, how often do you get leopard uh, eggs? All right, hey, what's up? Daniel's asking a question. How often do I get leopard tortoise uh, hatchlings? I have some eggs that have hatched over the last few months. 
Uh, they lay pretty much from June uh, into October. So I still have a few eggs left that were laid in October. So I should get some more hatchlings here in the next few weeks. They take about five months to hatch. Um, so I do get them yearly. I'll get uh, from my hatchling start, my, my hatchling start in December and will peter out in about another month and a half to where I, I don't have any more. But they're good, man. We say thank you to Gio Rami. Gio Rami, thank you. And B. Hutch, we know you're not Robert Medina. We were just also saying yeah, thanks to Robert. Thanks to Robert Medina and Bro uh, Bob Hutchinson. Yeah, we were just saying yeah. Robert because he had sent the donation. To right, yeah, yeah. We were trying to kill two birds, one shout out. Sorry. B. Hutch is the guy that you guys need to thank for our current sound uh, upgrade. So he was really generous and sent us some amazing equipment. Uh, we got it all working. And uh, we're wandering, so let's keep wandering. We're gonna climb up here. Oh, something else I did is I, my friends Emil, from Emil Cray and Son Ponds uh, sent me or plucked out some bromeliads. So I started sticking bromeliads in the rocks. Uh, these will propagate, and so like I said, the rocks will become alive with plants and reptiles, and that'll be awesome. So this is cool. Come on up. Any chance that I would put a pond in the radiated uh, enclosure, that's Daniel. Well, you know what, Daniel, I gotta keep earning uh, money because my electric bill is now about $700 a month. Um, but that's actually, we figured that out. That's because of the heaters I'm using to keep the tortoises warm. Um, so I gotta figure out how I can heat these animals more effectively, and I do wanna look into solar so that I can expand and use more pumps to create these ponds. Right now, I think I need to chill out because that's a pretty big bill. Um, and uh, I don't want to stress myself out anymore. So um, eventually, if I can continue to grow, all I want to do with the money that I earn is create habitat. That's what I want to do, create more beautiful habitats for these animals and then share them with you. Um, so that's kind of what I want to do. We're going to walk this way. So, but I got to do it in increments, man because I don't want to get bombarded with these bills. But I, I love um, the, how clear the pond is getting. And like I said, I threw a few fish in there, so uh, they're starting to acclimate, which is really nice. Uh, it's just, it's too much fun, man. I just can't believe it. John wants to know, he said, you know, I know the camp, I know the things are always changing here. What's the next big thing for the camp that you want to do? Yeah, I, and you know, I don't know if we videoed any of this, I Tom. Know if you could hear that question. Oh, okay, so uh, what was his name? John. John asks, what's the next big thing for the camp? Well, the next big thing for the camp um, is creating some really cool crocodilian enclosures. Um, we're gonna work with smaller crocodilians, caiman, dwarf crocs. Um, we can work with alligators here, but I'm only gonna take animals that need to be housed. In other, in other words, I'm not buying any of these animals. I'm not getting them, uh, like buying them. I, I, there's a need um, to create the enclosures for the animals. So you'll see what happens. There'll be whole stories as this unfolds. But what I want to do next... Our guy Jack Pazinski. Jack Pazinski is on. He helped build this thing. Jack, what up, bro? Did you see the pond? It's clearing up. I want to shout out to Jack Pazinski from Illinois. Uh, future pond builder came out here, busted his hump, dug trenches, and uh, smiled all the way through it. So... Whatever you want, people, you got to work hard. You got to be willing to dig, dig in the dirt. You got to empty the garbages. You got to do what we call lovingly in the business, the crap work uh, to excel. Just so you know, I do all the crap work here at Camp Kennan. The poop, the garbage cans, the, the changing, I do it all, man. Before you can appreciate anything, you got to learn to do the hard work. So what's up, Jack? Thanks for checking us out. But what I wanted to do is answer that other question. So guys and girls and people of all ages, um, this is the Asian turtle pond. It's gonna become a crocodilian enclosure. I gotta build some kind of really cool structure, a backdrop, um, maybe some kind of, imagine like a Kong-esque wall here. All right, maybe it's made out of telephone pole. Maybe it's made out of bamboo, but whatever it is, it's gonna hide the chain link. We don't wanna look at ugly chain link when we're swimming in our awesome pond but I would want to look at a pretty cool wall that looks like Jurassic Park behind it. So then imagine if you will, there's like a boardwalk that starts here. Maybe I step up one step and I walk, walk, walk. You turn to the right, 
snake cage, okay? Turn to the left, snake cage. Don't know which snakes, could be the black-headed python, could be Timor pythons, I don't know. It's gonna be cool though. So you can visit with them, and then you'll walk and open a gate. And beyond the gate, when you shut it, you walk out over this on a boardwalk, and below you are crocodilians. Don't know what species yet, but we're gonna do something cool. So all the Asian turtles are actually gonna to move to the pond in the back that I just dug, because that pond, was too close to my perimeter to legally house crocodilians as per fish and wildlife rules. I needed to be 35 feet off. I only made that pond about 27 feet off. So I had, I need the extra buffer. Uh, but anyway, that's what's gonna happen here. And uh, you know what? We're not gonna just leave it like a hole. We're gonna add some rocks to it. We're gonna shape it out differently. We got some ideas and I got some friends I think you guys may know also that can help me with ponds. So it's gonna be cool. We're gonna move the hammock and maybe I'll put like a skeleton in the hammock. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? We'll just lay a skeleton in the hammock and hang it up somewhere else. Like maybe, maybe things didn't work out too well for him living in the crock area, huh? Taking a snooze there. Maybe half a skeleton would be better. So that's what we'll do. But anyway, the um, enclosure, the boardwalk will go over this enclosure. We'll trim back these, these trees. So you'll kind of be at tree level, which is awesome. Oh, and another thing, man, guys, we had the most amazing, for me, it was one of my favorite days shooting um, for Camp Kennan yesterday. So be on the lookout in the coming days and weeks for some cool videos that we shot. Uh, we got a story coming out about Turkey Point, the Turkey Point nuclear power plant. Um, crocodiles, American crocodiles. Let me just tell you, we saw a lot of them. Uh, and we had really cool behind the scenes access to that facility. So that's coming out soon. Uh, we did basically, as I mentioned at the top of the live, we did a little something with Travis Pastrana this week, uh, today actually, and that's gonna come out on Tuesday. Uh, kind of a warm up for the swimming with. We got him to get in the water with Buttercup. He was a little nervous, he's afraid of snakes but you'll see that video. Uh, we also met two rad gals, Savvy Surratt and uh, uh, Desiree Du, and uh, they showed us their animals, their favorite animals. Uh, really, really cool iguana habitat that I think you guys are gonna love. So that video is coming out as well. And then finally, my buddy Jason Abels returns to the channel. Uh, a gentleman that we highlighted a few years back, he's got lemurs. He was involved with large carnivorous um, mammals, which would be tigers and lions. But he also has a beautiful herd of Galapagos tortoises that he produces babies from, as well as some radiated babies that are just absolutely to die for. So I can't wait to share those videos with you. Wicked Wildlife said he would love <coughs> to see a caiman one day. Yeah. He said there are no caiman species in any Australian zoo right no, now. No, there's not um, because of the tight. Uh, Wicked Wildlife um, wants to see caiman species. Uh, any caiman species. I love caiman. They're wild. Um, there are no caiman in any zoological institutions in uh, Oz. And that's because I would imagine because they have such strict um, wildlife policies came and got out in Australia. They could do very well in some habitats there. So uh, very important to not introduce uh, anything there. But yeah, caiman are on the list. Dwarf caiman, smooth fronts. Uh, tr you know, just uh, believe me, guys. It's it's my lifelong dream is to have a representation of every group of reptile: snakes, tortoises, turtles, lizards, and caimans. Uh, who knows, maybe a Tuatara down the road if, it ever, if I ever got that lucky. But anyhow, that's what's gonna happen here, guys. So depending on the size crocodilians I go with for this particular pond, I may not even have to move the turtles out of this pond because if I go with a smaller species of crocodilian, not gonna be a problem. And if you pan over here, Tom, we still got plenty of space left for some different enclosures that will house some different crocodilians. So, you know, I've always loved crocs and gators and any reptile. So I'm not just a turtle guy, it's just that's what I had here. Um, obviously I love them, but I wanna have a little taste of everything so we can all learn together and I can share my information with you guys and this channel can continue to grow with more content. A couple of uh, people commenting saying that is a magnificent beard you've got going Thank there. you, you like the beard people? I've been growing, I'm so proud of it. It's the only place I can grow hair, is in my nose and on my uh, face. It's, it's, getting, it's getting a little thin up top. 
We're deforesting. We're deforesting the top. Don't bother me at all. I got a pretty wife. I'm good. I don't need to. She's inside. I, I'm not trying to impress anyone anymore, but I am, I am fully committed to growing this beard and turning it into, basically, I want to look like some wild outback dude, you know? That's what's going on. I'm, I'm reaching the next phase in my life. I've surrendered to it, people. Ken and the wild man's coming. We're going to see how long I can get this beard this year. What do you guys think? Maybe Downey here. What do you think? That would be a respectable beard, right, if it came down there? I think so. Kalen Painting wants to know what species do you think he could have with a UK climate? Okay, what species does Kalen think he can have with a UK climate? Um, if we're talking tortoises, Caleb? Caleb? Caleb. Caleb, if you're talking tortoises, bub, I think you should stick with European species. They're smaller, they're easier to handle, and easier to house indoors. I've said this so many times. Greek tortoises, marginateds, Russians, and Herman's tortoises would be your best bet. Uh, beyond that, as far as a real exotic, would probably be the cherry head tortoise because it stays smaller uh, and you could bring it in easily. And I think, you know, if the temperatures get into, uh, I don't know what Celsius is, but in the 70s Fahrenheit, then, you know, you'll be okay to have them outdoors during your short but wet summer. All right. Paul Trevor said, hell yeah, my beard used to be that long. Yes. His job made him dial it back. Uh, <laughs> tall Traveler's out there protecting us, man. He's doing a good job out there. I believe he works for the armed forces. He's out there in the Middle East. So thanks for the shout out. Now, yeah, bro, I'm growing it, man. I'm just doing this. It's a lot of fun. So uh, uh, I'm sorry you had to cut your beard, but I'm glad you're out there watching over us, brother. So thank you very much, man. We're wandering. We're just walking around here. Oh, this hat? Okay, this hat I've had, it's so funny, man. I bought so many Akubras. It, it, it goes back to what I said a few weeks ago about being thankful for the simple things. I told you the story about when I first started making real money, I could buy any CD I wanted and I'd buy like 20 CDs at a time. And I missed out because I therefore then couldn't really absorb all the music and I didn't have the same appreciation for the music I got, or I didn't absorb the music the same way I did when I got one. Hold that thought. So um, basically, it's a similar thing with the hats. I bought all these different Akubras, and the reality is out of about 15 hats I have, there are two that I love. This one I got in Australia in 2014, and uh, I got this when I was visiting uh, Colin and Peter from uh, Critter Cam, and I uh, got this when I was down there with Tom Crutchfield. So 2014, I bought this hat. It's the Tablelands hat. It's a really cool hat. I put my own bead, uh, I, I made this band myself. And you know, the hat's old, it's dirty. I turned it up on the back, brought it down in the front. And I just, I really like this hat. So I'm sorry if I was long-winded. So what I'm trying to say is find a hat, wear the hat, beat the hat up, get it dirty, get some lizard poop on it. It'll look great. Weston Elder. Said, Weston. Hey. Weston uh, says, uh, I have a female snapping turtle. And I was wondering if you have any helpful tips and advice on raising a snapping turtle. All right, so Weston's got a female snapping turtle, and he wants to know about some advice raising it. They love to eat live uh, wiggly things. So if you got a young one, uh, earthworms, crickets, uh, goldfish, guppies, uh, any kind of invertebrates, ghost shrimp, things like that are really going to be beneficial to that animal. They don't bask often. Uh, but I would still provide them with a little basking area and some kind of UVB, very important. And believe it or not, every now and again, they'll nibble on some plants. So if you can get some, uh, I believe the type of, it was called an anacaris, anacaris, anacaris plant. Uh, it's kind of like a, a elodea is another type of water plant. Um, anything like that, they may nibble on that. Um, but I like also for my uh, snapping turtles a soft bottom, like a muddy bottom. They can burrow into and feel secure. Uh, if you can't do a muddy bottom, do some kind of aquarium sand that they can just kind of nestle into. So that'd be my advice, buddy. There you go. Oh, and don't overfeed your snapping turtles. They can overeat and get too fat. So keep them on a two to three times a week feeding schedule. There you go. Someone's asking, do you have any snow leopard bait? Ah, no snow leopard babies. Uh, you know, I had some earlier this year, but no, no snow leopard babies as of yet, uh, which is kind of a bummer. And there's a waiting list for those. So no snow leopard babies right now. All right. Well, we've kind of wandered around the pond. Uh, I've showed you an update on the leopard tortoise enclosure. Uh, here's some cichlids that I got out of the front ponds and they're swimming around in there. How awesome is that? So this pond is really starting to take shape, everybody. And I'm thrilled. 
Um, you can see uh, it's just looking really good. And every day it gets clearer and clearer. We swam in it today, it was awesome. Uh, you guys will see the video uh, coming out Tuesday. But that's it, man. I just wanted to uh, do a quick catch up. I'm losing my voice, so I want to kind of save it. And uh, we got to go because Tom actually needs to get to the airport and I got to bring him there. So uh, we had a productive week. And as always, I just want to say thanks to all of you guys who jump on these lives and who support the channel. Uh, I really am proud of the community we're building because you guys are an awesome group of people watching. And I just want to thank you guys for doing that. So thank you for commenting. Thank you for being a part of this channel. We're going to keep it up. You guys are helping us. We're looking to get to a million. We're happy. It doesn't matter how long it takes to get there. Let's just get there a million strong, but a million strong people that care about animals. We're not doing silly videos, making animals fight or buying things just to buy them. We are doing it the right way. So let's show people how it's done. Thank you so much. Like and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys Later, soon. Later, Devin Bailey. Later, Devin Bailey. Thanks again. And B. Hutch for hooking up the sound. <laughs> we have entered the 21st century. Bye, Jen Eaton. Bye, Jen.